Hello. Just to help you um, for next week, I want to spend a little bit of time on the notes that cover skin cancer and burns. Um, just to make sure you get the, the most important points here. If you see, hear any gurgling in the background, it's my coffee maker. There's always some sort of fun background noise. Um, so we're going to look at the three main types of skin cancer. Um, we get bumps in our skin throughout our life, and the majority of them are benign. They're not going to cause us any trouble. Sometimes they need to be removed, um, but that's mostly cosmetic. Um, but other times we get bumps that spread, um, spread throughout layers, spread throughout tissues, um, and that is what we call skin cancer. The risk factors and getting skin cancer are from sun exposure and actually if you have frequent skin irritation you have a high you are at a higher risk of getting skin cancer um, we actually have some lotions that are available you can see them at cvs that advertise that they have enzymes that can repair sun damage and those enzymes actually help to repair damage done to dna uv radiation um, it makes its way through our cells and actually breaks bonds in our DNA. Um, and so these enzymes can help repair some of that damage. Um, it, I, sh I should say it only, doesn't only break bonds, but it also kind of changes what's attached to each other. We're going to look at basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and melanoma. Um, and we're going to start with basal cell carcinoma. It's really pretty common. It's the least malignant, meaning that it is, it's um, least likely to spread um, into other tissues and organs. Basal cell carcinoma, cells of the basal layer, right? So it occurs in the stratum basale, um, where those, there's lots of proliferation, there's lots of mitosis happening. Um, and so when cancer cells are dividing, as they divide, they slowly kind of make their way into um, the dermis and the hypodermis. Okay, so that's how these basal cells um, metastasize. They go down into the dermis and the hypodermis. Um, you know, they, uh, to cure it, it gets cut out. Uh, you leave a nice thick margin, or you cut out a nice thick margin and things are usually okay. So here is a picture of basal cell carcinoma. The next time, squamous cell carcinoma, um, second most common type, it can metastasize. Metastasize means move, move out of the, its origin. Um, squamous cell carcinoma is cancer of the keratinocytes um, in the stratum spinosum. So in addition to the kind of epithelial cells, we have, there's a few other cells that we find in the epidermis. And so keratin, sorry, keratinocytes um, are the cells that um, are affected by squamous cell cancer. And so these, um, you'll see like they get scaly and like these red kind of bumps. You often see them on like older bald men. Um, and so scalp, ears, lower lip, and hands, areas that have lots of uh, sun exposure and generally low protection. Um, and with radiation and surgical removal, people are usually in pretty good shape. So here is an example of squamous cell carcinoma. Melanoma is the most dangerous. It's highly metastatic. It's hard to catch early. Um, and so treatment, we, you know, they cut out a very large amount of skin around the tumor, hoping to get all of the cells, and then you get immunotherapy. So therapy that actually tells your immune system to attack these cancer cells. Um, so the ABCD rule or the ABCDE rule um, is what dermatologists kind of look for when you're trying to rule out melanoma. So does a mole have asymmetry? Are the two sides differently shaped? Is there a regular border? 
are there multiple colors in a mole and is it bigger than six millimeters so these are all signs that what you're dealing with is melanoma um, and so here is a picture of melanoma okay so that's what you need to know for cancer um, and I wanted to spend some time with burns so all of us have been burned, um, hopefully <laughs> relatively minorly in our lives. Um, the burn, like a sunburn, is a first degree burn, generally. Um, if we start to get blisters, it's a second degree burn. So the first degree burn just affects the epidermis. Second degree burn um, is at, it goes down to where the epidermis and the dermis meet. And so that fluid that fills up the blister is actually fluid that is between the epidermis and the dermis. Um, and then third degree burns go into the dermis. We'll go into those a little bit more detail shortly. Um, so the reason why burns cause trouble is because they break down our proteins. They unfold our proteins. Um, and once our our proteins are broken, the cells no longer function. Okay. Um, when you, when you get a, a burn, you need to worry a lot about dehydration and electrolyte imbalance. imbalance. If you've had anything, you know, even close to a third degree burn, you know that those burns seep a lot of fluid. In, and so, um, you know, even if it was a very small burn, like say you burned yourself on a, um, a cast iron pan um, and it was a third degree burn so the size might not be very big but you put a band-aid on it and you notice very quickly that that band-aid is saturated with fluid um, and that is because our skin protects us from water loss and when you've burned off the majority of it um, that protection is no longer there uh, so there's a thing called the rule of nines that's used uh, to evaluate the amount of someone's body who has, that has been burned. Um, so essentially the body is broken down into 11, 11 sections and each section is counted as 9% of the body. Um, and it's important because you need to get an estimate for how much fluid has been lost when somebody's on, um, entering the ER. So uh, here is just a picture that goes over. So each leg is 9%. The arms together are 9%. Um, you've got anterior and posterior head and neck, 9%. Um, and then the genitals are, are 1%. So you add it all up and you get 100%. And so this is the way that we estimate the amount of fluid loss and the amount of burn um, coverage on a body. So again, first degree is just epidermal damage. You're going to get some redness, some swelling, some pain. Sunburns are first, most sunburns are first degree burns. Second degree burns, you get epidermis and upper dermis. Um, you see those blisters, okay? Um, certainly painful. Third degree burns, the entire thickness of the skin is involved. Um, you get cherry red skin or grayish white skin or blackened. Um, there's no real swelling, mostly because there's a lot of seepage going on. Um, and there's not a lot of pain because you have burned out those receptors. If the receptors are gone, you don't feel anything. Um, and often skin grafts are necessary. Um, the he so um, it's the healing process of third degree burns that is uh, that is so painful. Um, the burns themselves, that the area that is destroyed, is not painful, but the healing process is just horribly painful. And so here is the difference between a first degree burn and a third degree burn. Um, there are you know uh, there are further classifications of burn into fourth and fifth but people usually do not survive in um, a fourth degree burn um, so that's below the skin into the muscle mostly because of fluid loss and shock okay so uh, when are you in trouble you're in trouble if more than 25 percent of your body has second degree burns 
or more than 10% of your body has third degree burns, or if your face, hands, or, or feet have experienced third degree burns. So in order to help um, somebody heal from a third degree burn, burn they, um, so debridement or debridement is removal of uh, damaged tissues. So they remove all the burned skin, you get heavy doses of antibiotics, temporary skin coverings. And so um, they'll actually grow up some of the patient's own skin, um, essentially in a Petri dish, and cover the skin with their own epithelial cells. Um, tilapia, which is a type of fish that's um, often sold in grocery stores, tilapia skin is actually a very effective temporary covering. Um, and then you will, they'll actually remove skin from other parts of the body and put it over the burn area. Okay, again, it's a very, very long and painful process. So hopefully that hits kind of the key points um, that you need to know for burns and for cancer. Um, as you're studying over the weekend, please feel free to, um, to post a question on the community help forum. I will check in uh, Sunday morning and, and Monday first thing um, and will answer anything I see and hopefully you will also answer questions for your classmates. Have a good weekend.